Forget everything you've seen in the movies. Little green men, reptilian overlords, insectoid monsters, all of that is just our imagination clinging to what it knows, to earthly templates. Real alien life will likely be so strange it would break our very concept of biology. After all, the incredible diversity of life here on Earth, from glowing fish in the bottomless dark of the ocean to microbes thriving in boiling geysers, is just a single data point, one random spark in the vast darkness of the cosmos. But what if there were other sparks, each igniting in its own unique way? Get ready. We're embarking on a journey to three hypothetical worlds, all grounded in real scientific principles, to see what evolution is truly capable of. Our first destination, the system of a dim red dwarf. These stars are the most common in our galaxy, but they are far smaller and cooler than our sun, bathing their worlds in an eternal crimson twilight. Orbiting this star is the planet Ipa, tidally locked, meaning one side forever faces its star, just as the moon does with Earth. This creates a world of contrasts. One hemisphere is a frozen wasteland of eternal night, while the other is perpetually, if dimly lit. Right in the center of this warmed zone, where the ice is given way, lies a vast but shallow ocean, the dark, almost black eye of Ipa. Above its surface, a perpetual raging storm is born from the clash between warm air from the center and icy winds from the frozen edge. But beneath this chaos, in the deep, lies a surprising calm. We dive in, and instead of open water, we're met by a dense underwater jungle. Here on Earth, plants are green because they reflect the part of the solar spectrum they don't need, while effectively using red and blue light. But here, in the dim, predominantly red and infrared light, survival depends on absorbing every single photon. That's why the local flora is pitch black, greedily soaking up the entire spectrum to squeeze out every drop of energy. Its roots dig deep into the silty floor, while its dense canopy creates a three-dimensional labyrinth. Drifting through this darkness are streamlined, teardrop-shaped creatures, reminiscent of fish on Earth. Nature often arrives at similar solutions for similar problems. These are the local herbivores, peacefully gliding through the thicket and grazing on the black leaves. But tranquility here is an illusion. Suddenly, a patch of what looked like leaves springs to life, wrapping itself around a distracted grazer and dragging it down into a hidden maw, a predator that has had millions of years to perfect its camouflage. In this world of eternal twilight, eyes never evolved. Here, the battle for survival isn't fought with sight, but with sound and vibration. Listen. It's a whole symphony of life and death. Countless species are communicating with clicks, hums, and whistles. It's their way of warning of danger, calling for a mate, or simply announcing their presence, creating a complex soundscape much like the chorus of our own jungles. This soundscape will echo for billions of years, but it seems we've been noticed. It's time to move on. From the cold darkness, we jump to the blinding light of a young, hot blue star. Our target is the last planet in this system, a gas giant named Nimbus. It's similar to our Jupiter, but orbits much closer to its star, making its atmosphere warm enough to support colossal clouds of water vapor, each the size of a continent. It is here, in these floating oceans, that life was born. To survive in the sky, you have to learn to fly. Evolution went down two paths. The first was to become incredibly small. The clouds are home to quadrillions of tiny spider-like creatures, the local cloud plankton. They are so light they're carried by the faintest air currents, and for extra lift they deploy gossamer-thin electrostatic threads, catching a ride on the atmosphere's electrical charge, much like how spiders on Earth use ballooning to travel. But there's a second way to conquer the sky. Become enormous. 
we see something colossal emerge from the haze, taller than any skyscraper on Earth. This is a sky whale, a living hot air balloon. Its body is a wafer-thin membrane filled with gas that it heats from within, making it lighter than the surrounding air. But staying warm requires a lot of energy, and now it's time to feed. From a massive organ at its base, the whale unfurls a giant, sticky net and begins to trawl through the clouds, filtering out trillions of plankton-like creatures, just as blue whales on Earth filter krill. Some of the catch is immediately burned for heat, while the rest is converted into a concentrated, energy-rich nectar. This nectar is the most valuable currency on Nimbus, and it attracts hunters. Trailing every whale is a swarm of agile jet squids. They aren't efficient floaters, but they can propel themselves in short, sharp bursts by expelling superheated gas. Like vampiric hummingbirds, they wait for a moment of distraction to pierce the whale's skin with their sharp beaks and steal some of the precious nectar. But for all its complexity, this incredible ecosystem is doomed. Blue stars burn hot and die young. This system's star will soon explode, incinerating everything. It's not a tragedy, but rather a brief, brilliant moment of existence in the vast history of the cosmos. Our final world is the most exotic of all. We're on Monnier, an icy moon orbiting not a star, but a massive brown dwarf, an object that failed to become a star. Gravity here is weak, only 5% of Earth's, but the magnetic field of its parent dwarf is immensely powerful. Days here last only three hours, followed by a rapid, deep freeze where snow made of frozen carbon dioxide falls from the sky. Life here has adapted to unimaginable conditions. Instead of water, it uses ammonia, which remains liquid at much lower temperatures. This biochemistry requires an oxygen-free environment, as oxygen would destroy it. Most importantly, local life has learned to incorporate the powerful magnetic field into its biology. With the first rays of the distant star, as the temperature rises, the world awakens. Strange structures begin to unfurl from the frozen ground like flowers. Their tissues are saturated with magnetic minerals, similar to magnetite crystals found in birds and sea turtles on Earth for navigation. In the weak gravity and strong magnetic field, these flowers lift off the ground, levitating hundreds of meters into the sky to catch as much precious light as possible. Across the icy surface, creatures resembling ice skaters dart at breathtaking speeds. These are the local skaters. From their heads extend two conductive tendrils, which form a kind of magnetic sail, or kite, that pulls them along, allowing them to perpetually chase the sunset. They live in a symbiotic relationship with photosynthetic microorganisms on their shells, which provide them with energy in exchange for constant sunlight. Their eternal motion is a race against death from cold and starvation. But this harmony is fragile. Suddenly, the icy crust shatters and a spiked metallic claw shoots out, grabbing one of the skaters. This is an ambusher, a predator like a living landmine. It hides underground, spreading out sensitive whiskers that detect the electrical fields of its prey and strikes as they zoom overhead. Danger could be lurking beneath every step. Night is falling, and it's time for us to go home. And just like that, we're back on our warm, familiar, hospitable Earth. The worlds we visited were just scientific speculation and active imagination guided by the laws of physics and biology. But who knows? When we look up at the night sky, filled with countless stars, we realize that somewhere out there, worlds even stranger and more wonderful than we can imagine might exist. This isn't just a fantasy, it's a way to stretch the boundaries of our thinking, to prepare ourselves for what we might one day find. And maybe thousands of years from now, our descendants will actually swim in black oceans, soar above continent-sized clouds, and maybe, just maybe, they'll even get to talk to others who, just like us, look up at the stars and marvel at the infinite variety of life in our universe.
I'd be grateful for any support. Leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the like button. It really helps the channel.